Hey, what's up everybody? Hydrogen Harry back live for another really exciting experiment. This time in a place that looks a little bit different and we are no longer at the Science Center. We are practicing safe social distancing. So I'm coming at you home or live right from my home. But don't worry, just because we've changed where we are, it doesn't mean we've changed the excitement of our experiments. So a lot of you guys might be wondering, well, where's the other nitromaniac? Where is Bunsen Bernie? Well, again, we want to practice safe social distancing. So Bernie is safe at home, rest assured. You might have caught him last week doing some really cool chemical and physical changes. But since we have to stay apart, it's going to be kind of sad doing the show without Bernie. But I'll try and do our best. Again, if you haven't already done so, make sure you go onto our website and get our lovely worksheet. That way you guys can play along from home, answer some of these really cool questions, and you can even submit these to try and get some of these questions answered live on air. Now, we do have a couple minutes right before we actually go at 3 o'clock, so I want to give a couple shout-outs to some people that reached out to us during last week's live show. Bernie did the best he could, but he couldn't answer all the questions and couldn't respond to everyone, so I'm going to try and pick up his slack and answer some of these things. Uh, first things first, we had Virginia Bryant who said, My daughter has been missing her real science class, and she is grateful for you teaching her something new. Well, we know this is a hard time for pretty much everyone right now. You're away from your schools, you're away from your teachers, you're away from your friends, and so we're very appreciative to hear stories like this that we can actually help bring some of this science into your homes uh, and do some really cool things. So Virginia, thank you for that. Now we also have Jillian Bretz who says, Hi from Maryland at Troops 943 and 422 in Central Maryland. Uh, we want to give a shout out to them. We got viewers all around the country even though we're based here in South Florida. So we like to uh, just give everyone a little bit of appreciation even if you're not from down here. Thanks for watching with us on Facebook Live. Uh, and last, I want to give a shout out to Zoe, age seven, seven. She had a really good question for us uh, that we didn't get a chance to answer before. She asked, what liquid can you add to the green balloon experiment to make that balloon pop off? Well, if you guys don't know what experiment she was talking about, that's when Bunsen Bernie was using his uh, baking soda and his vinegar with the balloon on top of the flask. And he actually added that baking soda and vinegar together, which then caused the release of that gas, which filled up to the balloon. If you wanted that balloon to pop off, you only had to add two more things, more vinegar, and more baking soda. So I want to see maybe you guys can try that at home. If you have a video or a picture of that experiment, just drop it down in the comments below and we'd love to see that. And last but not least, I'd love to uh, show a lovely little bit of artwork that we have from some of our viewers at home. Uh, this was from Facebook user We Are One Flesh. If you guys don't remember, this is from our live show not too long ago when we were doing our exciting electrons lab. And you can see with this lovely photo, you can see that's me, Hydrogen Harry, touching our Van de Graaff generator. You can see my hair was standing up in this beautifully drawn photo. So I just want to thank you guys for submitting that. And again, if you have our worksheet from today, you can go ahead and submit that in the comments down below as well. Now, with all that being said and out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with today's experiments. Now, today's experiments are a little bit different because they're going to be very egg sighting. So if you haven't figured it out by now, all of our experiments are going to revolve around eggs, especially because there's a particular holiday coming up this weekend. Maybe you guys have a few extra eggs uh, lying around that you're going to paint or dye or color. Well, I don't like to do any of those traditional crafts. We love to do science here. So we want to make sure that we can do, we want to make sure that we can uh, do some really cool science experiments with these eggs. And there's some really cool things that you guys can actually do at home that's really easy with most of the ingredients that you guys will probably already have. Now let's first talk about just a couple characteristics of an egg. Right? If you've never seen an egg, most of the eggs that you guys get from grocery stores, they come from chickens. Right? They've got this hard outer shell and on the inside you've got that uh, clear or white stuff when you start to cook it. And then you have the yolk in there. Uh, so it's a little bit liquidy. But these things are also very dense. Uh, if you, when we're going to be talking a little bit about density, that's basically how much mass is packed into a specific volume or a specific area of space. Uh, now, if we take some of these eggs and we try to get it to float, we can actually test to see just how dense these things are. So we're going to go ahead and grab a couple of our really cool science glasses. And we're going to do just a quick float test with these. All right, I'm going to dip into a little bit of water I have. And we'll go ahead and fill up these glasses. We're going to see if our egg is going to sink or if it's going to float. Now if you watch carefully, as I drop some of the eggs in there, you'll see that right off the bat, our egg is going to pretty much sink to the bottom. But there's some really cool science that we can do here to actually make that egg float in the water. And basically what we have to do is increase the density of our liquid. And one easy way to do that is to add salt. You guys probably have plenty of salt lying around your house. 
he actually add just a little bit of salt into our glass, we can actually adjust the density of that and make our egg float. So for this experiment, we're going to add about five tablespoons of salt. There's one. There's two. Three. Four. And being kind of rough with it. Five. We'll add just a little bit extra there. All right. So now with our salt inside of our container, we're just going to mix it up, try and make sure we dissolve that salt as quickly as we can. Now it does help if you use warm water. So I made sure that my pot was nice and warm before I added my salt. You see our water gets a little bit murky there. Now once our salt actually begins to dissolve and we take another one of our eggs, you can see that what happened is that it should float. Right? Instead of sinking down to the bottom, you can see the egg floating up here on top. And again, that's because we've changed the density of the liquid. We've made it more dense than the egg, so instead of the egg sinking down to the bottom, it actually floats up to the top, which I think is pretty cool. But as far as egg experiments go, this is one of the more easy and kind of one of the more boring. So we want to step it up a notch and see some other really cool things that we can do with these eggs. Now there's one ingredient that we used quite a bit last week during our live show, and that was vinegar. And vinegar is a special type of acid. Right? So uh, we're thinking about acids, I want you to think about different liquids like orange juice, lime juice, lemon juice, soda, and our white vinegar here. And that acid is actually going to react with what's on the outside of our eggshell. These eggshells, while they're hard, are made of calcium. Now calcium is the same thing that we find in our teeth and acids are going to react in a certain way to calcium. Now, what's one way that we can actually protect our teeth? Well, if you're listening to your dentist, you should be brushing at least twice a day with toothpaste, but not just any toothpaste. Dentists recommend that you have toothpaste that contains something called fluoride. And that fluoride is a very special ingredient because that's what's actually going to help protect the calcium on your teeth. Uh, so we can do a quick experiment like I've done here to see how that acid is going to react to our calcium. So I have three different eggs here uh, that I've been soaking in vinegar since this morning. Now this egg over here uh, has no protection on it. It's basically just a blank standard egg, dropped it in the vinegar and I let it sit. This one, I took a marker, marked it down the half and I brushed half of the egg with our toothpaste with fluoride. And this egg over here, I've brushed it fully with our toothpaste with fluoride. And we wanna see exactly what's happening to our egg. Now, the first thing you notice about these experiments is the one without any toothpaste on it is really foamy. There's a lot more gas happening there. And that's actually a reaction happening between the acid, the vinegar, and the calcium on the outside of the egg. All, right, all of those bubbles are actually eating away at the shell, and it actually makes our egg a little bit squishy. Right? So we take our dump bucket here. And if we look at the outside of the egg really close, you can see again all that foam, and you can see the shell is a little bit squishy, right? I can kind of squeeze it a little bit, and it's almost a little bit rubbery. Right? And that's because the acid is actually breaking down the calcium there. You might be able to see it a little bit better with our half-covered egg. Right? You can see one side is going to have all those different gas bubbles on it, but the opposite side is relatively clean. That's going to be the side that we have our toothpaste on, and that toothpaste actually kept our egg nice and strong, right? So you can see if I tap it, we're not gonna have any dents or bumps on one side, but on the other side, whoop, you can see a couple of those dents forming. Now with our third and final egg, this one is brushed fully with our toothpaste. And you can see that even if I give it some light taps, I'm not getting any cracking, I'm not getting any indentations, right? And I'm being a little bit rough with it too. And you can see our egg is nice and fine. And that's because we didn't let the actual vinegar react with the eggs here. So it didn't break down any of that calcium. So nothing actually happened. Now again, those eggs were only sitting since this morning. So about six or seven hours. What happens if you increase the amount of acid and increase the time that the calcium is sitting in the acid? Well, this is one of the cool things that we can do over here. You might have noticed over here to my right, I have these beautifully colored containers of eggs. Right. These rainbow eggs that I actually have over here have been sitting inside that vinegar for at least four days now. Right. So a lot longer than just the morning. We're going to go ahead and see what happens to these eggs when you leave them in an acid for an extended period of time. And this is one of my favorite things to do and something you guys can definitely try at home. So I do encourage you to do so. 
All right, now we'll go ahead and start with red because if you don't know, red is my favorite color. All right, this egg that we take out, we want to be very careful, is going to look very similar to a normal egg, but it's a little bit different. If you look in really closely, it's super, super squishy, right? This is what I call a rubber egg. We've actually let it sit inside the vinegar for so long that the entire shell has pretty much dissolved away. And now it's become almost like a squishy little water balloon. And what's even cooler is, oh, you can make it bounce and you can see what's on the inside there. The egg itself has not really been affected. What has been affected is that shell on the outside. No longer is it a nice hard shell, but in fact, a nice rubbery shell. And we can see that with all of the different eggs that we have here. All right, let's take out our blue egg and see the same thing. Now with that red egg that we had, you can see I rubbed away a lot of that shell. And you can see me kind of rubbing away some of the calcium that's still left there to reveal that squishiness. And again, if you bounce it very carefully, you can see it bouncing. Now you want to be careful because you don't want it to end up like my first egg, which kind of <laughs> splatted and exploded all over the place. Now this is how I like to dye my eggs on Easter Sunday, right? So maybe you guys can give this a chance as well. All you need is a little bit of vinegar, a couple drops of food coloring, and lots and lots of patience. As long as you're waiting at least three to five days, you can make these naked rubber eggs inside your very own home, which again is pretty cool. But it's not quite cool enough. Right? Even though we have these wonderful rubber eggs, I want to do something bigger. I want to do something more. And I saw my friend Bernie last week doing some really cool stuff with fire. Well, Bernie's not the only one here that can actually play with fire. Now, before we actually do this, I always want to give a disclaimer. You want to be as safe as possible. Do not try this one at home without proper safety equipment and without proper parental supervision. But what I'm going to do is almost a sort of magic trick. I'm going to take an egg and I'm going to actually fit it inside of this little flask here. Now there's a couple things we have to do before we can actually get the egg inside of it. First, we need a very special type of egg. If we just take any of our standard eggs that we have here, you can see that it still has the shell on the outside. There's no way that that's going to go inside of there. Now I could use one of my rubber eggs, but as you saw with the first red one I had here, those aren't very sturdy either. If I try to squish it or push it, what's likely going to happen is just going to burst and I'm just going to get yolk all over the place. So another type of egg that we can actually use is one that you may have actually had as a meal. Right? If you've ever had hard boiled eggs, you can actually see that those hard boiled eggs are a little bit firmer than our rubber eggs, but not nearly as rigid and stiff as the eggs with the shell still on them. Right? So I have a couple of really cool rubber, hard boiled eggs, right? Again, a little bit squishy, but still a little bit firm. I want to get that egg inside of my container. Now again, if I just try to push it and squeeze it, you can see it's kind of starting to spill over the sides and what will likely happen is it'll just crumble and get all over the place. But there is a special way that we can actually get that inside of the container and that's by using a little bit of fire. So what I'm going to do is actually take this piece of paper, just very carefully light it on fire, drop it inside of the flask. Now what that's going to do is it's going to create a change in air pressure, right? So we have the air all around us. And every time we breathe in and breathe out, right, you can see that air going in and out. Well, air is a very important thing when we're dealing with fire, right? Without any oxygen in our air, this fire is not going to stay lit. So after I light my paper and put it in there, I'm going to place my egg on top. What that's going to do is it's going to cut off the oxygen supply to that fire and make the fire go out. So it will be pretty safe but it's also going to do something else. While the fire is heating up inside the container, it's making the air around it very hot. That heat is making the air expand, right? And get much, much bigger. Right? Same thing you see if we're going from like um, some ice and you're melting it down into a liquid and that liquid keep heating it up, it eventually evaporates into steam, right? And it starts to expand and move a little bit further out. Now, once the fire goes out, it's going to cause a rapid cooling in the air. I mean, the air inside the container cools, it's going to contract or shrink down. Again, if we use water as an example, when we take our water and we freeze it into ice, all right, we have a physical change there and you can see everything gets a little more compact. That pressure that's beginning to cool in there is going to make the pressure a little bit less inside the flask, which means the outside pressure is going to be a little bit more. Since we have a high pressure out here, low pressure in there, that should force the egg inside of our container. But enough talking about it, let's go ahead and give it a shot. 
So again, we want to be very careful with this. Do not try this at home without the proper safety and supervision. Just want to make sure this catches there. Make sure it gets inside of my container. Woo. All right. So when science fails, you just want to try again. We always say science is not a perfect thing. So if you mess it up, don't worry. Just keep trying and try again. I'm going to make it a little adjustment to my paper here. Make it a little bit thinner, easier to go inside. All right, let it catch. We'll drop it in there. Drop our egg on top. And what you should see, oh, is that, right? That suction that we saw there is pulling the egg inside of our container. Again, a rapid heating up from the fire causes expansion. The rapid cooling of the fire causes contraction. That contraction acts like a vacuum and actually sucks some of the air from the outside into our container. All right. We're going to give it one more try just because I want to make sure we get a nice full egg in there. And I've got all these extra eggs over here just in case, so why not give it another try? Again, let's give it a little close up. Drop it in there. And there you have it. We've got our experiments, right? So some really cool fire stuff. Again, don't try this at home without proper supervision, but it does lead to some really, really cool things. Now there is a way for me to get that egg out of there, but with all that ash and soot in there, I'm not gonna try that one. But uh, if you want, we're gonna link some things down in the comments below. So just check those out on ways that you can actually expand on some of these exper experiments that you guys had here. Now, before we get uh, to the final part of our show, I wanna make sure that you guys are asking some questions. All right, hopefully this entire time you've been paying attention, but I wanna ask you guys some questions and hopefully you guys are gonna ask me some questions. So for those of you that have our worksheet, make sure you're looking at some of those questions and see which ones you can answer down in the comments below. One of those questions asks, what was the primary ingredient that changed our eggs into these rubber eggs? Now, I'll give you another hint. Bernie used it last week in conjunction with baking soda, and it created some really cool expansion, really cool gas that's coming up. So if you know the answer to that, again, put it in the comments down below, and I'll go ahead and check that out later. Now, also at the bottom of that worksheet, there's a really cool section where you guys can draw some things, and I wanna see some of your pictures, right? Just like I showed a picture at the beginning of the show, I wanna make sure we can show off these pictures each and every week. So if you have anything for us, please make sure you drop those down below. Now we're gonna go ahead and ask, is there any questions that are popping up from the crowd out there? Do you guys have anything to ask? Hydrogen Harry, test my knowledge and see what's going on out there. Riley and Bear Blair want to know if the ocean salt water is dense enough to make an egg float. Ah, Bradley, Blair, definitely recognize those names. They've been tuning in each and every week. We miss you guys from camp. Make sure you say hello to Leah, their mom. Where we love those guys at the Science Center. And you guys asked a great question. If you're looking at ocean water, and ocean water is full of salt, just like our first experiment. Now, most of the oceans aren't going to be nearly as salty enough to actually make an egg float, but there's one particular place in the world where the oceans are super extra salty, and that's somewhere called the Dead Sea. Right, there's actually so much salt in that water that you can pretty much float without even trying. And uh, I'm not the best swimmer, so I have a lot of trouble floating. But if I went to the Dead Sea, it would be hard for me to even dive down. There's so much salt that it literally forces you back up. It's like swimming in something that's really, really thick. You can't really get down to the bottom of it. Also, if you've ever tried in a swimming pool to learn how to float on your back, try going to the beach instead. What you'll notice is that it is slightly easier to float in the ocean as it is uh, in fresh water or a lake because there's a lot more salt in the ocean. Bradley Blair, thank you for that excellent question. Do we have another one from the crowd? Kaylee wants to know, what else can you mix in water to give it a higher density? Ah, so what else can you mix in water to give it higher density? Now, when we were adding our salt, we wanted to make sure that the water was hot. That way, the salt dissolved in water. Now, salt is not the only thing that we can dissolve in water. If we wanted, we could also use sugar. So a lot of you guys use sugar in a lot of your drinks. If you're adding enough sugar, uh, you're making that water a little bit more dense. Uh, so it's very similar to what you would do with the salt. Essentially, you're adding a lot more of the material and you're making that more dense. All right, Kaylee, thank you for that awesome question. All right. Do you need food coloring to make vinegar um, bouncy eggs? Ah, do you need the food coloring to make the rainbow eggs? 
you don't actually need the food coloring. You can do this same experiment without any colors. But of course, uh, it's a lot more fun if you can use something that's a little bit more colorful. Uh, but the food coloring is not required. It can be done. And what you'll notice is that the egg itself almost looks a little bit more clear or opaque. Right, so if you guys actually try that experiment home, I challenge you guys to do that. Make sure you, tr maybe you can give it a shot. You can try to make your own naked rubber bouncy eggs. And if you make it without food coloring, make sure you drop a picture in the comments down below. I'd love to see what you guys are making and love to see you guys trying some of these experiments at home. We've got time for a couple more questions, so keep them coming, guys. No, nothing, not challenging me. Well, that's all right, because I had a really good time. I want to thank everyone from the bottom of my heart that has stuck with us uh, even through these crazy times. Hopefully we can put a smile on your face. We are doing everything we can to make sure that your life at home is just as fun as it would be if all of this craziness wasn't going around. So please make sure you stay tuned to all of our live shows and stay tuned to our social media channels for all the interesting videos that we're going to be posting. My name is Hydrogen Harry. It's been a blast and I'll see you guys in a few weeks.